Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Green. I'm consultant in diabetes, professor of child health at the London Diabetes Centre, uh, London Medical. And I look after children and their families with diabetes, also teenagers and young adults. And most of my patients are on in insulin therapy, intensive insulin therapy. I do see one or two uh, older teenagers, young adults with what would be called type 2 diabetes, but mostly my practice consists of, of, of type 1. And as you know, this is all about looking after yourself with diabetes, giving regular injections of insulin, either by uh, insulin injections through the, through the skin or possibly using an insulin pump, monitoring your diabetes with different forms of monitors and sensors, thinking about your diet and thinking about uh, exercise and uh, I appreciate this is a challenge for all and here at London Medical we try and give as much advice and as support we can to help people uh, cope with this, uh, this with their diabetes uh, and uh, get the best out of the treatment that they can. Now it's interesting times that we're all in and, and uh, the coronavirus pandemic has caused a lot of concern about the uh, with the diabetes community, both for health professionals, mm -hmm. but particularly for people with, with diabetes. And there's definitely been a, a worry that diabetes itself is a big risk factor for coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, not so much in the risk of getting the illness, but in the complications that you might get when you've got the viral infection. And uh, this has been well reported uh, in the medical literature and in the media. However, I think it's fair to say that there's now a lot of evidence that this really only is for the older population and those with type two diabetes and also in association with being a little bit overweight. And I think I'm pleased to say that uh, for young people, children, teenagers and young adults who have type one diabetes, I think it's now well established that there is no additional risk if you do get coronavirus. Uh, for most people, young people who do get coronavirus with or without diabetes, it is a relatively mild uh, illness. It's, it's, a, it's a bad flu, if you like, uh, and doesn't seem to lead on to the complications that you get in the older population. And certainly for young people with diabetes, it also does not seem to have any worrying concerns uh, in relation to the more severe developments that you get uh, with coronavirus. So this is obviously good news and reassuring. However, obviously if you do get an infection with type 1 diabetes, I'm sure that you're all aware that this can actually cause difficulties with the diabetes. It can throw the diabetes out of rhythm, out of step, and you have to take quite a, 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 a considerable amount of precautions and uh, further interest in your diabetes to get through any illness. And this would be the same with coronavirus. So we often call these the, the sick day rules. And a, a good shorthand for that would be taking the word sick. So what do you have to do when you, you get an illness, you know, such as a temperature, a bit of a cough, a cold, feeling unwell, fluey, off your food, maybe even vomiting a, a little bit. So all these are classic symptoms of any viral infection and, 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 and similarly per coronavirus. So what would you do on your sick day rules? Well, first of all, you think about the S, which is the, the sugar. You need to watch your sugar levels. And a bit confusingly, uh, having infections sometimes can make your sugars go high uh, or sometimes it can make your blood sugars go low. So particularly if you're not eating, if you're vomiting, then hypoglycemia is something that, uh, that you have to think about. Uh, and contrary to that, you can have high levels of glucose where the sugar's going up. You might have to think about giving more insulin. 
So you need to watch your blood glucose levels during this time, perhaps do more monitoring than uh, you're used to, uh, and think about uh, what those levels mean. The I in six stands for insulin, and you therefore have to think about what, what different things you should do when you've got an infection with, uh, with your insulin dose. Most important thing is that you don't stop your insulin. Even if you're off your food completely, you need your basal insulin. So if you're on basal insulin injections, it's a good idea to keep your basal insulin going. And then you need to monitor whether you need extra insulin uh, given with your, when you um, see what your blood glucose levels are, you might then want to give occasional shots of short acting insulin if it's rising. Obviously, if you're tending to go low, then you wouldn't give that insulin. Similarly on a pump, you may want to alter your basal rate, either putting it up a little bit if you've got high sugars or bringing it down a touch, 10, 20% if you think you're getting hypo or low sugars and not eating. So the combination of measuring your blood glucose and adjusting your insulin is very important for uh, managing uh, infections. The C for six stands for your calories. What do you do about calories? Well, often when you're ill and not feeling well, Again, classically would be the case in coronavirus, you may not want to eat, but you must keep up your fluids. Small amounts often is the catchphrase, uh, sips here and there, of any sorts of fluid. Uh, if you want to, you can have sugar containing fluids, but you therefore need to watch what your blood glucose are doing when you're taking, taking those. And as I say, you, interestingly, if you're not eating, that doesn't matter too much. You therefore don't have to give bolus uh, shots of insulin to cover the food. Uh, but remember, keep up your basal insulin. And finally, the K for six stands for ketones. And you need to monitor those either with urine or preferably uh, blood. And basically, you want to keep ketone free. If your ketones are rising, and certainly if you get above 1.0 millimoles per liter, then you really have to think carefully uh, about w what you should do about that and certainly a rising ketone levels at the, above that level I would suggest that you ring your diabetes team if you're feeling unwell with high ketones high blood glucose and I think you probably not only should ring your diabetes team but think about going to the emergency uh, uh, station the accident and emergency at the local ho hospital diabetic ketoacidosis is that uh, worry it doesn't happen very often uh, it's not to be expected when you get coughs and colds uh, it may be a little bit more commoner if you've got a, a nasty infection like coronavirus but watching your blood glucose is watching your insulin watching your fluid intake you should be able to keep on top of the uh, development of ketones but if you are getting high levels of ketones then you need to seek help as soon as possible so to summarize the, the overall message about coronavirus for young people with type one diabetes uh, on insulin therapy is really good. It, it's not a major risk factor, uh, but it is an illness which can cause problems with your diabetes and you have to manage that as you would do with any illness with the sick day rules. Here at London Medical, we can offer advice over that through our physicians, uh, and our specialist nurses and our dietitians, and we'd be happy to speak to you at any time on that. Our phone number is, let me just check on that now, is uh, 0800 0483 330. So I'll repeat that, 0800 0483 330. And you can get information about diabetes on our uh, www.londonmedical.com. Org, uh, sorry, londonmedical.co.uk, uh, our website. So difficult times for all, keep safe. What's very important is that as anybody, irrespective of whether you've got diabetes or not, you keep the same uh, suggestions and rules and advice that we would do about coronavirus. Keep your distance physically from people, wear a mask where it's relevant, Wash your hands regularly with soap and uh, water. Uh, and obviously, if it's possible, stay away from uh, uh, any crowded development uh, uh, to keep your, yourself safe and to keep your family safe.
I wish you all the best at this difficult time. And please do not hesitate to uh, consult us here at London Medical for further advice. Thank you. Bye-bye.